Hey guys, welcome along. Thanks for tuning in. It's uh, Nigel's modelling bench here, but you knew that. Um, another review for you today, and this time it's a little bit different. It's some um, resin from uh, all the way from America, and it's the Real Space Models, RealSpaceModels.com Apollo CSM Command Service Module for use with the Rival 196 kits, and this in itself is a 196 scale resin kit. So in here we're going to get the command module, the command service module, our engine and our boost protective cover. Why do we want this set? Why would you want to buy this for your 196 scale Revell kit? Let me just show you. This is the boxing for the 50th anniversary kit. Um, I've done a review of this. If you want to look back you'll see it. Um, I've done a full review of the kit. And we can see on the front of the box here, this is a picture of the actual model itself, I believe. And here we've got the um, LES, the Launch Escape System. And what this basically did, this would, um, if there was an issue on launch, it would blast away and pull the command module away from the rest of the uh, rest of the Saturn V. And then they would be uh, parachuted safely into the ocean um, rather than perish with the rest of the rocket exploding or whatever. The problem with that is there's a cover that goes over here which is why when you see them going off um, this looks white whereas in reality this is a very very reflective chrome like finish with strips of mylar on it. Um, I'll put a picture up now which actually shows Apollo 8 um, on the tower and you can see we've got that white cover on there and you can see it's got lots of ridges and stuff on it um, so you can see now that when you look at the box, we've got something missing. So the Revell kit is inaccurate in that it's got a piece completely missing that's not there. Um, the other thing that's inaccurate that may not bother you so much is the actual um, command service module itself. This is actually a block one and every manned mission was actually fitted with uh, a block two. So we're up to Apollo 3. 13 I think after that they may have changed I'm not sure but I know that all of the um, you know 11 12 13 they they and 8 even they used um, a block 2 command service module which was upgraded from the block 1 and I'll show you now some parts and features of the parts how you can tell the difference so let's have a look first of all at the kit parts and what we actually get in our Revell kit and this is the plastic and as you can see here we've got the, the actual um, dome of the command module there we've got the two halves of the command service module we've got our astronaut seats there we've got the protective um, heat shield there for the uh, for the bottom of the command module this is the upper side of the command module where the um, sorry the service module where the command module would sit those three pins go in those three holes and then this is the back end where the engine goes and then we've got this cap that goes over there with this plastic keyed circle for picking up the lunar module now that's incorrect because you would have a um, docking station on there which is like some pincers um, and also this is incorrect because the back of the engine was not that shape and if you look on here you can see that when you look we've got these radiators running radiated around the outside in narrow segments vertically up the side and this is what distinguishes the block one from the block two so if we have a look at the actual kit itself now I have had this open and had a look because I've got to be honest I just filmed this and I use an iPhone 6s plus for my filming and didn't realize I'd actually taken a photograph rather than a sort of 10 minute long video so I'm having to do all this again so that's why this is opened so I have had a look in here and I've had a look, good look through it and description and everything and then realized I was talking to a camera that was set in photograph mode so it took one picture of the first shot <clears throat> never mind then so lovely packaging very very rigid strong box this has come to me from America and I would like to take this opportunity to thank Glenn very much uh, I approached him and asked him if he would be interested in perhaps offering me some discount or something for giving him some uh, 
you know some coverage and he's basically supplied this to me so thanks very much for that Glenn um, and I will be using this in my build so uh, you'll see it get used there as well um, realspacemodels.com have a look on there if the reason they're called real space I believe is because they don't do anything which is fictitious there's no sci-fi it's all real stuff and there are some very very obscure bits and pieces on there and lots and lots of resin upgrades and bits and that so go and have a look on the website and see what you think so let's get the box out of the way this is what we get inside when you get this this is vacuum packed so there's no risk of any damage which is uh, which is nice so we've got our instructions and our bits of resin there so we get rid of the bag so we'll just put these parts out of the way and we'll have a quick look at the instruction sheet now we can see straight away it's just one A4 sheet of printed paper, black and white, but it's, it's telling us all we need to know really. Um, basically with our command module and the service module, the service module silver with the, with the grills being white, the actual um, command module itself is chrome silver as I say in reality it was covered in uh, strips so you could use that with chrome foil or whatever I don't know. Um, and then these window areas here are painted in black. You've got red around the thrusters, thrusters here. Um, and you can see on here we've got the docking ring, the docking mechanism, which is more accurately portrayed. Then we've got the engine, which we have to glue on here. We have to remove some resin here, which is normal for resin. Um, and then we've got some colour here, we've got red around these thrusters, silver on the actual um, engine cover and nozzle, and then dark grey on the back end. It's telling us the position that everything needs to be put in. So it's telling us we need to use the, the plastic kit parts from Revell for the high gain antennas. And there they are. They're not so bad. They could be improved upon, but you know, they're, they're there. So that's them. Um, it's also telling us we need to use the thrusters from Revell. And there they are and they're not so bad either there's a bit of flash on them but um, you know with a quick drill just open them out on the ends they'll look fine and they're just going to be uh, glued onto the side of the the CSM um, in the relevant locations so that's basically that oh we got the um, the boost protection cover here which as I say is completely missing from the kit and that's vac form we got to trim the base around and you've also got to cut out an area there which goes over the um, over the uh, umbilical for the conduits and everything for the um, sorry this is a, co a conduit cover for all the umbilical wires and everything the systems that apparently when this released I was watching um, Vintage Space the other day and Amy was, did, did a, a video about how this works and apparently there are electronic shears that actually slice through all the cables and um, hose connections and sealed them and then the, the mounting points that actually held the command module to the surface module were actually sheared as well. Um, metal strips were actually cut and then the, the command module would be freed. I have actually messaged her on one of her um, videos and asked her to reply. She doesn't seem to reply to many videos to be, or to questions to be honest, which is not a good thing. I always try to reply to people on mine, um, on my channel. And I've asked the question that in that situation, how did the LES work? How did it work fast enough to pull the command module away from the service module and yet shear all these cables and connections so um, I'm hoping for an answer on that one so let's have a look at these parts so as I say the Revell parts when you look at them they've got this 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 grill here uh, which is running longitudinally along the service module whereas it should be narrower upper and lower grills running around which is what you're getting with this resin set so there you go you can see these grills here running around and they're they're beautifully cast beautifully molded whichever terminology you want to use and um, very very nice very sharp detail we've got some panel detail on here as well and uh, yeah there's a bit of a bubble there on that part there but I'm not going to worry about that um, I'm not even sure if there's what shape they're supposed to be uh, I'll have to do some work on my references um, but you can see the detail on the actual command module going around is far superior to the detail on the Revell kit so you can see there you know, it's fairly um, fairly flashy and fairly chunky whereas on here we've got the you know the correct thruster detail here and on the sides and then we move around to the rear end 
the rear side of the if, if we're going to call that the front the rear side is uh, the detail is um is much better um one downside if there is a disadvantage with this you can't take the command module away from the service module but then if you don't want to play with your model i don't think that's going to bother you um one of the things about the Revell kit, you get the um, is it the SLA where the uh, lunar module sits. Part of that is done in clear. I should be covering that up and painting it and having the lunar module as a separate display. Um, this isn't a toy. This is an accurate model for display. So that's what I'll be doing. So that's basically your um, command module and service module with the uh, you can see you've got the detail on the front there, which is correct and uh, and the correct rails and doors and everything and then we've also got here this is a location where our conduit goes so that'll clip on over there just glue on with some super glue and it's a nice fit even before it's cleaned up so that's going to look lovely and then you've got the you've got your uh, boost protective cover here you have to cut this area out and that's then going to go over that and that will fit on here like so and you can see you've got the covers for the relevant areas all matching on your um on your uh vac form piece of plastic there so that won't be a problem at all and then we've got the engine here with the correct cover now i don't know if the light's going to pick this up because it's white we seem to be dealing with a lot of white lately but the um around the back of here you can see the detail on there and there's some detail going around the um the actual engine as well the actual uh exhaust should i say the nozzle so yeah it's all very nice when you look at when you compare that to what you're getting in the kit you get this which is 100 percent incorrect and you get this in two halves so you've got seam there to deal with and a lot of um a lot of mess on the inside as well so you can see that basically that is replacing that now i'm not sure about the rib detail if that's correct i need to check my references maybe it should be smooth i'm not sure um, I know on the 144 scale kit there's a lot of, lot of um, little chunks and steps around the outside of it. So basically there we go guys. Um, so if you're in the market for one of these, realspacemodels.com, it's $25. Um, the one crippling factor for us here in the UK is the shipping and the customs and everything. Now the shipping is going to be around about $20. So maybe slightly more so you're going to be spending nearly as much on the shipping as you are on the model and the problem is it's going to come into the country they're going to put VAT and perhaps import duty on the value of the whole lot so say your shipping is $20 your model is $25 you're going to pay 20% VAT on $45 which is what's that $9 yeah and then they're going to which is what seven pounds so they're going to charge you seven pounds plus eight pounds for the the pleasure of doing so. So it's going to cost you an extra fifteen pounds. If you're in the UK and you're in the market for one of these, if you're interested in getting this set, drop me an email at nigelsmodelinbench at gmail .com. And what I'll do, however many people get in touch, whether it be five, ten, whatever, I'll get in touch with Glenn and I'll find out if he can send me a, a, a package and we'll have like a group by deal. And then we only pay one lot of shipping. Because as you all know from America, if you send one of these sets, it will cost you, say, 15 to $20. I don't know, $18, whatever it is. Um, if you sent two sets, it would probably cost you $20. Three sets, $21, you know, and, it's, and that's the thing. And then we'll only pay one lot of customs, one lot of import duty, and one lot of the £8 fee they charge you for the pleasure of doing so. So, and then what I can do is I can ship them out to you um, in the UK obviously you're good you i'm not looking at making any money on this myself but i just want to help you guys out and also get um, glenn some custom if i can so you're not going to save a bunch of money but you're going to save a little bit um because i've got you know i've got to pay for the um you know the customs and everything when it comes in for for all the different sets so really you're just going to save um, if Glenn gives us some discount because we're buying a bunch of them and you're going to save your eight pounds fee or if you know if there's eight of us you're going to pay a pound instead of eight pounds and you're going to save a little bit on your customs if he does us a good price so um oh, and you're also going to save on your customs because only be one lot of shipping 
So there we go guys, that is the Real Space Models 196 Apollo CSM. You can see this is all done up in all the, the correct colours and everything. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. Um, so as I say, if you fancy one, drop me a line. Um, if you're in the US or whatever, then uh, go get yourself one because that, that Revell kit is in this area. These parts are just 100% wrong. <laughs> there you go. There's no other way of putting it. So um, thanks for watching. If you've liked this, please subscribe. Um, if, if you, sorry, if you've liked this, give me a like. If you, if you uh, want to subscribe, please subscribe. There's lots and lots of space stuff and all sorts of other stuff on my channel as well. I do all sorts of genres. So uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye and happy modeling.